This week on Crypto Recap, we are covering some exciting big steps for the first US cryptocurrency or crypto company IPO. And then we've also got some exciting or interesting revelations in uh, cryptocurrency liquidity that could uh, is pretty telling of the future. We are joined again by Dave Zeiler, Money Morning's cryptocurrency expert. Thanks for being here, Dave. Always great to be here. So let's start with the IPO stuff. That's pretty exciting. So there's the first kind of big steps towards a U.S. Co- or a company listing on a U.S. exchange right, right. that's in the cryptocurrency world. Uh, what's going on? Are they U.S. companies or what's happening there? Well, what we have is I've always thought that we would have a U.S. company would be the first Bitcoin or crypto IPO in the U.S., but that's not going to be the case. In fact, we have three Chinese companies that are have already filed with the SEC to have a listing. One of them specifically was uh, looking at the NASDAQ market. Should you invest in it? Like, is this worth playing? Well, I mean, what you're looking at here is, first of all, it's an IPO. IPOs are always dicey for retail investors because typically when the price goes up on the first day, you're not gonna get the initial price. You're not gonna get, you're gonna end up with a much uh, bid up price you're going to overpay for it. So here at Money Morning, with all IPOs, we've always said you should always avoid them, except in a few unusual circumstances. And in this case, you've also got more risks layered on top of that. Not only is it an IPO, but now you've got companies that are based in China. So you have all sorts of issues with you know the trade war and all that coming in. And then, of course, they're crypto companies, which is a very volatile space. So it's lots of risk, and I would advise people that when these things do happen, and we don't have a timeline for it yet, we just know that they filed with the SEC. It could be a while before we actually see any of them have an IPO. Um, I would say people should wait at least like six months, maybe a year. Just keep an eye on it, stay on the sidelines, but don't jump into it. Is there any angle that could be like, if people are looking to get in on that more immediate returns, but don't want the risk of the IPO. Is there kind of a side angle to play on this? Well, I would think that just uh, buying something, especially Bitcoin, buying a crypto and Bitcoin is always, you know, that's the one that people are using as a store value and investment. I would buy Bitcoin because it'll probably get sort of an echo effect when these things go public. You'll have the IPO, there'll be a lot of talk about these companies and most of them are more Bitcoin based anyway. Bitcoin will almost surely get a bump when all that hype starts to come, you know, there's always hype around IPOs and the first crypto IPO will surely get a lot of Wall Street hype. So that would be the best way to play it. So kind of pivoting to our other topic. So there's been some new, a, a company did a little research into the liquidity in, and how much liquidity is actually in the cryptocurrency world and came to some pretty big findings. Can you uh, talk us through that a little bit? Yeah, the company's coin market cap, which is very well known in the crypto world because they have, for many years, have listed all of the cryptocurrencies by market cap. So, of course, Bitcoin's at the top and then it follows from there. And they have the prices. They have lots of information and charts. And they decided that um, this is an issue that's been in crypto for a long time is that the exchanges have had a lot of inflated volume and people wanted to know, like, what's really going on? So they decided to uh, create a formula and algorithm to figure out how much liquidity is actually there, you know, how much trading is actually taking place. And um, what they found out was kind of surprising. One of the well-known analysts, his name is Willie Wu, um, decided to really dig into the data. And what he found out was that once you get past the top 40 cryptocurrencies, all of the rest of them are illiquid. So we're talking about nearly 5,000 cryptocurrencies exist today everything past 40 is illiquid. So it's like 99% of all the cryptocurrencies in the world are illiquid and basically worthless is what he said. Um, And this echoes kind of things that I've talked about in the past is that eventually the great majority of cryptocurrencies that exist are just going to fade away and go to zero. You know, they can't all succeed. And in fact, very few of them will succeed. And um, when he says, you know, once you get past 40, that sounds about right to me, you know, about, I've always thought that, you know, 40 or 50 max, probably less than that, are going to survive in the long run. Because especially with liquidity, if you don't have liquidity, it means you can't sell it. You know, that's the real issue with these coins that he was pointing out, is that there's so little action on these markets that 
even if you're able to buy it, you probably won't be able to sell it. There's just not enough buyers and sellers in the market. Well, that about covers it for today. Uh, thanks so much for sharing these insights again, Dave. And people can uh, catch any of Dave's work at Monday Morning. We'll have a link in the description of this video. You can see whatever his latest article is. You can also follow him on Twitter. And to get a lot of his live commentary on the world, which is always delightful. And uh, we'll catch you next time, Dave. Next week? I'll be here. Perfect.